Hey everyone, and this is Scott from CertMedia.com, and in this video I'm going to be looking at add to any share buttons for WordPress. I'm going to be going over the plugin, its settings, and I'm going to be discussing uh, really whether you should use it or not, and whether you should use an alternative. Uh, add to any is, it's been around really forever. I, I used it back when I was on Blogger many, 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 many years ago, because it was quick and it was easy, and the buttons look stylish. Um, but now it's got a nice little WordPress plugin. It has some neat features in here that a lot of people aren't aware of, and I think honestly it's because the user interface in this plugin is not very nice. Um, we got we went ahead and we installed it from the WordPress.org repository, and you can do quite a few interesting bits. I'm gonna open up a post right here to show you what it looks like. So this is just a fresh install as is. It looks like it's not getting around with this layout at all because it's just thrown over there to the left hand side of the screen. Um, but you can set the icon style to be any number of pixels. So you can set it to something like 35 if you want it to be 35 pixels. Sorry, you can you have to do um, the nearest value. So you have to do 36 and you have to do it in intervals of the two. So if you want to do 40, you can do 40. And you can do it in intervals of two all the way up to, I'm not even sure what the number is. Let's find out. Can we do 100 pixels? And we can. All right, they look glorious. So we went ahead and we added our large share buttons. And you can choose to enable the icons to have a transparent background, which allows it to blend in a little bit easier with your theme, as you can see here. Now it looks a lot more modern um, because it doesn't look like add to any share buttons. They look like they're your own stylized share buttons. And if you were to do this, you could set it to like 32 again. And you can also do to change the foreground. The foreground is the actual color of the icons. So if we wanted to have them to be transparent and set them to black, now it looks really good. And it allows you to have such a great level of flexibility with this plugin. And that, that's why it's so popular. And honestly, that's why I see so many people use it. It's just you can get a really nice looking share button set with relative ease. Uh, Right under here, you could choose your share buttons from a multitude of services. Um, and you just pick which ones you want. And let's just say you want like LinkedIn. And if you want to drag them, you can drag them to the position you want them to appear. And um, those look good. You have to add the add to any follow widget for these icons as it mentions here. We're just not going to worry about that too much. Um, we went ahead and added these. The universal button is the actual add to any button you can do a couple things you could choose to use an image to replace it so that way it fits more with your branding you could just use text only you could just do none which will disable universal sharing uh, what that does is it disables the add to any button that drops down and gives you a suggestion of more buttons you got to keep that in mind and then you can of course do to show the count of the number of shares that the post has you could choose to add a sharing header and i'll show you what this looks like now that we've enabled a bunch of options so we added the share counter, which I personally do not like the appearance of it. You could just add a share header, which I just did and I put the word share. I'm also not a fan of that personally. And I don't like share counters, so we turn those off, much better. You could choose to display them in a couple of locations naturally because as every share button has to have, you can do bottom and top as well as top of the post. There's also floating buttons, which we'll get to here in a minute. You could choose to display it on the front pages, archives, and feeds. I recommend disabling that. You could choose to display at the bottom of excerpts. I don't recommend doing that either. You could choose to display it on pages and on media pages, which media pages are attachment pages. Whenever you upload an image and you don't have an SEO plug and redirecting them, it creates a new dedicated page for those images. That's a major SEO issue. So those pages shouldn't even exist as far as I'm concerned, but you shouldn't have share buttons on them either. Menu options, you could choose to only show the universal share menu when the user clicks the universal share button. So what that does is instead of on hover, when you click this, it should prompt them to, you would think, let's try this again. And it will prompt them after they click to now have the buttons. It's it's just a nice little bit of flexibility if you if users are going to be really interacting with it It doesn't get away get in their way if they just hover over it But if somebody clicks on it, they're intuitively trying to find more ways to share and it's really just a personal preference more than anything Additional JavaScript you can as it mentions here add to any does have advanced uh, JavaScript that you can add 
and their documentation is quite extensive, which I do appreciate. I love good documentation in a plugin. I really wish they didn't float over here, but uh, it's what happens. Under the additional CSS, again, you can uh, you can customize this using their additional options as well to modify the button outputs. And then you have a really cool option under here. You can choose to use a custom icon set. Probably nobody here is doing that. But what you can do is you can choose to cache the ad to any JS locally. The advantage to that is you're able to then combine it with your common optimization plugins, auto-optimize, a big one, and you're able to minify it further. It should already be minified when you enable this options, but if you look over here, add to any adds quite a bit of JavaScript, but it's this JavaScript that's actually the largest bit of the payload. This is where you get a bunch of nonsense, most of which is not even used, this is when you get into the performance impacts of using these external share widgets. That's why I converted my sites over to NovaShare. Um, I'll put that video up here as well. But when you use plugins like these, you just add a lot of bulk to your page load. So it's important to have some way to host it locally. That way your CDN, whether like Cloudflare, can go ahead and combine it, minify it, defer it, whatever it needs to do. As it mentions here, this is now being served from my own local domain, which allows me to set the cache headers. Also allows me to, if I wish to minify it, I can. And it allows me to serve from my own CDN, which has a number of advantages. And just looking back and forth, they're one-to-one. -one. It's exactly the same. So I really appreciate though that they added this functionality. If you're really stuck on using add to any, make sure you have that option enabled. They say they don't recommend it, but adding the expires headers and allowing your optimization plugins to mingle with it can help you quite a bit. Floating, under the floating section, this just allows you to set a floating bar on the left or right hand side of the screen. You could choose it to attach to the content. This is a bit of a complicated rule set. They already have a large number of rules in here, which is very nice. They didn't have to do this, Basically what it does is if you enable it and attach it to content, if the user is scrolling down, it will stick to the body of the post. And it looks like we need to enable some share buttons. We'll just click it. Uh, let's see where we're at. Hide on screens, no. We just need to get some share buttons over here. Offset background, we're just gonna set this to yeah, that orange color will look very nice. Looks like it is not taking a liking to something on this page. We'll go ahead and put it on the right hand side for now. Even then, it seems to be giving me a little bit of hassle. Let's see, we'll just set the offset to zero. See what it looks like. There it goes. It was because it was attaching itself naturally with a negative pixel, which it was not necessary. So make sure you go ahead and try that yourself. Still doesn't look like it wants to stick to the content. That's fine though. I prefer to have it on the left-hand side because viewers tend to read left to right and in a very F-shaped pattern. We don't need it to have any offset because we just established that it doesn't work. And it looks great. So. The flexibility of having share buttons float onto the left-hand side of the screen is quite useful. You can control when they hide themselves on mobile devices, which is really nice. You could use to hide them until the page has been scrolled on X amount of pixels. This allows you to only load it in your defined content areas, especially if you can't get that attached to content to work. You can just go ahead and set a number of pixels. Let's say, uh, we'll just set it to something very large to make it obvious. We'll set it to 500. So what will happen now is I shouldn't see this anywhere until I scroll into this content body. And then as soon as it did, wow, I almost got that perfect with the number of pixels. Uh, it went ahead and hit itself. And then you could choose to hide it on mobile devices, which I recommend you do. You could set your icon size once again. I recommend doing that transparent background again, just so that way it's not in the way. Go ahead and enable them. And it looks great. Honestly, these buttons all look great, except for these ones, because they're floating over here for some reason. And you could just do a horizontal dock. Um, well, we'll show you what happens here. 
we'll disable these, which is the vertical, and we will enable this instead. And I should expect them to be on my right hand side. Let's see, hide on desktop screens. We're gonna enable this. So on desktop, it's initially hidden, but on mobile devices, it will add floating buttons onto the bottom right or bottom left. I, for, I personally find these to be very annoying and I definitely do not like them on my mobile devices because while mobile device screens are getting quite large, you still, you don't wanna bombard the user's mobile experience by adding a bunch of buttons that they just don't need. And the key thing is you want them to view your content and either click your ads or click your affiliate links, depending on your monetization strategy, of course. Um, so yeah, I highly just don't recommend enabling the floating or, uh, horizontal buttons, but the vertical buttons on desktops where you have very large real screen real estate, by all means. Overall, um, this plugin is great in principle, but we have to now address the elephant in the room, its performance. Fundamentally, Add to Any is going to be a bulkier service. Um, like compared to our test when we did Nova Share, that plugin really only came in like not, it was a couple of kilobytes. It was hilariously small. And even Social Warfare is just hilariously small compared to these plugins. The one thing you're gonna run to a pickle here with is the JavaScript. Even though it's being hosted locally, we have the disadvantage of it really just being a lot of nonsense to load. So we have to load the SVGJS, which is 33 kilobytes. That already is more than, I believe, all of Nova Share's plugin combined. Then you have to load this HTML chunk, which is the dot. This is what actually allows the menu to render underneath that little plus button. You then have to load the page.js, which is that JS we're now hosting locally instead of it being hosted out in a third party. If this site had Cloudflare, it would be smaller due to Brotly compression, but even still, it's not gonna be that much smaller. The add to any.min.js is incredibly small, but it's, it doesn't do much. So it kind of wins in that regard. And the add to any CSS is quite small as well. But the problem with that goes back to the fact that the add to any payload really comes from the main JS file and the SVG JS. And there's probably CSS in that as well. I wouldn't be surprised. Everything, every, everything JavaScript now has CSS built in. So it's a very large payload. I would be wary if you're, if you're suffering from a mobile performance drop on PageSpeed Insights or Lighthouse testing, depending on how you're testing your site, I would try disabling this plugin, at least on staging, to rerun the test because even though the total payload is about 63 kilobytes compressed, it's still more than just using a locally hosted share button set like uh, NovaShare or Social Warfare. And the other benefit is, is you don't have to worry about connecting to a third party, which brings up hindrances in like GT Matrix. Um, overall, it's a great plugin. I love the flexibility, but just keep the performance in mind. You would think that these bytes are really small and very minimal, but when you're working with your website, you're trying to optimize it, really, you run into the performance pitfall of your mobile devices only have so much CPU power to go around. And it isn't so much the amount of cores that a mobile device has, but how fast the processors are. They're very slow. And that's because they're low power, more or less. I would just be wary. If you find mobile performance issues, go ahead and try disabling this plugin. And otherwise, look at an alternative like Social Warfare. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below. I'll try to help you out. I, I love this plugin. I have clients who use this plugin. I just personally don't use it because it's a lot bulkier than I need my share buttons to be. Make sure to like and subscribe. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.